What car should you buy if you love the Porsche Taycan but want something a little bit more practical? Well, Porsche has just revealed a new estate version of that car called the Taycan Cross Turismo. And here are the CarWow top 10 things you need to know about it. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. The new Taycan Cross Turismo takes a regular Taycan and adds lots of features borrowed from the Mission E Cross Turismo concept from 2018. This means it's pretty similar to the regular car from the front, but things start to look very different from the side. The new Cross Turismo gets a completely new roof that's taller and flatter, and you can get it with roof rails, unlike the regular Taycan. And the Cross Turismo has some new gloss black wheel arch trims that make it look wider and taller than the normal car, a bit like the trims Audi puts on all road versions of the A4 and A6. The Cross Turismo's alloy wheels are new too, I especially like the open spoke design. You get 19 inch rims as standard on 4 and 4S models, but the Turbo and Turbo S cars get 20s instead. But the biggest difference with the Cross Turismo is the back. It has a much deeper boot lid and there's a large black spoiler mounted at the top. The rear bumper is a little bit fussier than the standard car though, and there are some extra bits of silver and black plastic trim at the bottom. But would you have this new Taycan Cross Turismo over the normal Panamera Sport Turismo, or do you think Porsche should have stuck with a normal four-door coupe body? The Taycan Cross Turismo's interior looks very, very similar to the normal cars. There's the same minimalist dashboard with raised centre console and barely any physical buttons. There's also an 11-inch touchscreen, just like on the normal Taycan, and the same curved digital driver's display. Entry-level Taycan 4 Cross Turismo models get eight-way adjustment for the front seats, but turbo models get 14-way adjustment as standard. Go the whole hog for a top spec Turbo S car and you get 18 way adjustment. Speaking of seats, you can get the Cross Turismo with two or three seats in the back, just like with the normal Taycan. Porsche's new Estate EV comes with a regular Taycan's performance battery option as standard. So no matter which Cross Turismo model you pick, you get the biggest 93.4 kilowatt hour battery. You get an 11 kilowatt onboard charger as standard, so you'll need to leave it plugged into a home wall box for nine hours to get a full charge. But Porsche being Porsche, you can pay extra to get a 22 kilowatt onboard charger, which means you'll only need to leave it connected for about four and a half hours for a full charge. You can also charge the new Taycan Cross Turismo from the same 270 kilowatt public fast chargers as the regular Taycan. Well, so long as you can find one. Now these can boost your battery from just five to 80% full in just 23 minutes. If you don't have that long to wait, you can actually add 60 miles of range in just five minutes. Porsche says that the 4, 4S and turbo models should manage between 240 and 280 miles on a charge, but the more powerful Turbo S cars only manage up to 260 miles. The new Taycan Cross Turismo comes with the same selectable driving modes as the regular Taycan, so you can potter about using barely any electricity, or you can engage boost mode and let all hell break loose. But it won't just be fast in a straight line, it should deal with corners well too, especially the Turbo S models. These come with carbon ceramic brakes and rear wheel steering as standard. This setup steers the back wheels in the opposite direction to the front wheels to make the car more agile on country roads or round town. And it helps you manoeuvre in narrow streets too, which is handy because the Taycan Cross Turismo is almost five metres long. You can also get this new Porsche with speed sensitive power steering, so parking feels less like a workout. And there's an optional steering assistance feature for the cruise control too. And you can add these features to your car even after it's been delivered using over-the-air updates. You just send Porsche more money and you can download them straight to your car without having to go to a dealership. The Taycan Cross Turismo doesn't look as slinky as the regular Taycan, but this means it's a bit more practical. You don't have any extra legroom in the back, but the new Taycan Cross Turismo does come with more headroom. And the new car's boot is bigger too. You get 446 litres of space in the 4 and 4S models and 405 litres in the Turbo and Turbo S cars. This is about 40 litres more than you can fit in a Taycan when you compare them like for like. The size of the front boot, or fruit as I like to call it, hasn't changed though, so you still get 84 litres of space in there. You can also get the new Taycan Cross Turismo with a special bike carrier. This can hold three bikes at once and it's been designed so you can still open the boot without having to take the bikes off which is handy. All this should make the Taycan Cross Turismo one of the most practical performance EVs on sale. But I reckon there's another fast estate that might be an even better all-rounder than the Taycan. Now, if you want to find out what it is, there's a link just popping out in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Click on that and you can go check out the video. The normal entry-level Porsche Taycan comes with core spring suspension as standard. You need to get the 4S model if you want adaptive air suspension, which you do. But the new Taycan Cross Turismo comes with this fancier setup across the range as standard. One of the advantages of the air suspension is that it allows you to raise the Cross Turismo suspension so you don't damage its expensive nose on any steep driveways or speed humps. And you can tell the car to remember where these bumps are along your journey so it can do the exact same thing automatically next time. The Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo range kicks off with the Taycan 4 Cross Turismo. 
This car gets two electric motors as standard, which produce 380 horsepower. Although when you engage launch control, the car puts these motors into boost mode, which now ups them to 476 horsepower. With this mode enabled, the Taycan 4 does 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.8 seconds. If that's not fast enough, there's also a 4S version with 490 horsepower as standard and 571 horsepower in boost mode. That car can do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Then there's the turbo, which has 625 horsepower as standard, rising to 680 in boost mode. That car can do 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Then there's a the range topping Turbo S, which has the same 625 horsepower as the normal turbo, but in boost goes all the way up to 761 horsepower, which means 0 to 60 miles an hour takes just 2.7 seconds. Incidentally, that is 0.1 of a second slower than the regular Taycan Turbo S. And like the normal Taycan, you can get the Cross Turismo with an optional off-road pack. Now, this is a little bit like the Sport Chrono pack you get in the new 911, but instead of helping you go fast around a racetrack, It'll help you if you fancy doing a bit of green laning. This adds some extra protective body trim, including some black plastic fins on the side skirts and the bumpers. It also gets you some new interior bits and pieces, including a compass on the dashboard instead of the regular stopwatch you get with Sport Chrono. Now, I'm not sure the point of this, especially when you have a massive sat-nav screen right underneath it. Porsche has also added a new driving mode called Gravel Mode, because even though you'll probably never do any off-roading, it's important to know you can if you're sort of want to. This mode jacks up the car's suspension by an extra 30 millimeters, and it changes the throttle response so the car's electric torque doesn't just hurl rocks at someone driving behind you. Even though it's a bit taller and a bit boxier, the new Taycan Cross Turismo is almost as aerodynamic as a normal Taycan. This car has a drag coefficient of just 0.25 cd, which is seriously low, so it can slip through the air really easily. But the new Taycan Cross Turismo manages a drag coefficient of 0.26 cd, so just 0.01 more than the Taycan. Part of the reason for the aerodynamics is that it uses standard air suspension to lower the car at speed, and the more it hunkers down, the less drag it tends to produce. It also has flaps in its front bumper that can open and close, so it only sucks in air when it needs to cool the motors and batteries. You can buy the new Taycan Cross Turismo now. Entry level 4 models start from £79,340. If you want the 4S, that'll start from £87,820, which is about £4,000 more than the regular standard Taycan 4S. Faster turbo models come with a £116,915 price tag, and the Turbo S will set you back £139,910, to be precise. Both of these cars cost about one thousand pounds more than the equivalent normal Taycan. Now if you want to check out the latest Porsche Taycan lease deals, there's a link popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen now, which you can click on to go to CarWow to check out the offers. I hope you all enjoyed the video, if you did please give it a like. If you click on that box there, you can sign up to the CarWow newsletter and we'll keep you up to date with all the latest car news in between these video uploads. Click on those windows for more content. Thanks for watching.